different ways of doing this, but here's one rather nice way. It doesn't take too much effort. If my x divided by 2 has a remainder of 1, then x must be an odd number. But if I add 1 onto it and think about x plus 1, then that's going to be an even number. In other words, it's going to be a multiple of 2. It's 2 times some integer. Here, I've said that my x divided by 3 leaves a remainder of 2. So if I add 1 on and do x plus 1, well, that's going to have 3 fitting into it. So it's a multiple of 3, all told. So it's 3 times some integer. If I do x divided by 4, there's a remainder of 3. So if I add 1 on, then it'll be a multiple of 4. In the same way, if I add 1 onto x, it must be a multiple of 5. If I add 1 onto x, it must be a multiple of 6. If I add 1 onto x, it must be a multiple of 7. So a, b, c, d, e and f are just some integers. I'm just saying they are multiples of. That means that x plus 1 has got 2 as a factor, and 3 as a factor, and 4 as a factor, and 5 as a factor, and 6 as a factor, and 7 as a factor. But hang on. 6 is 3 times 2. So if I know I've got 3 as a factor and 2 as a factor, I've got 6 already. What about 4? 4 is 2 times 2. So I need that 2, but I only need one more 2 in to actually make up a 4. So I'm going to need 2 as a factor twice. So my x plus 1, to keep it as small as possible, has got to have a 2 in it. It's got to have another 2 in it to get that 4. It's got to have a 3 in it. It's got to have a 5 in it. I've got 3, I've got 2, it's got to have a 7. So if I multiply all of those together, I get a number which has 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 as factors. And if you multiply those all together, you get 420, trust me. And that means that the x that I started with must be 419. And if you divide 419 by 2, you'll find you've got a remainder of 1. Divide it by 3, you've got a remainder of 2. And all of the rest. Try it for yourself to check. So 419 is the smallest number where all of this is true.